Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Scott, and um, if this is your first time here, um, welcome. And uh, today it's just me doing this video because today we're going to talk a little bit more about tech stuff. Um, and a couple weeks ago, we dropped a video on here talking about um, what's in our camera bag and kind of getting into what kind of equipment we use to capture the imagery and the videos and the photos that we take. Um, so today we're going to go one step further and kind of jump onto the computer and look at how I edit the photos and how we kind of get a consistent kind of look or style going about what we do. I try to keep like a consistent kind of style or theme going with them where um, like especially from one trip to another like if it's just the Redwoods trip I kind of try to keep them kind of looking similar or keeping kind of like a color scheme or like an idea or pattern or style going um, and a lot of times it is kind of it comes about from the content itself so like for example the Redwoods content had a lot of green like because a lot of the footage was of trees and in a forest so a lot of it tends to be green and trying to consistently get kind of the same greens or the same tones going for most of the pictures so how do we do that um so let's jump into the computer and start looking at um how i actually edit the photos and the program we use for editing photos is lightroom it's adobe adobe lightroom and um to get started i've got a couple photos in here that i think we'll go through and i kind of want to show um, either the different way of editing them and the consistency of editing them across all of them. But for starters, here is um, a picture we're going to look at from our most recent trip to the Redwoods here. And um, we stopped in San Francisco, and here's a shot of Courtney at the Golden Gate Bridge. And this is kind of the before. This is straight out of the camera. Um, so the first thing that's important is if you're shooting photos to edit them, to shoot in a raw format. Okay, so if in your camera, shoot, switch it from like shooting JPEGs to raw because that allows you to. Um, really bring the most out in the picture um, and allows you to really go into depth and it doesn't fall apart. The picture won't degrade or get all noisy and start to look like crap really easy. Um, so this is straight out of the camera and like what we're going to go for here is kind of something that looks like this and this is kind of the final product that we use. We use this on our Instagram and we post it on the blog and things like that. So um, you can already see kind of like just what I did in general was I just kind of brought everything out. I brought the contrast up, made it a little brighter, um, kind of bringing out the parts that I want to bring out and like bringing out the good parts of the photo without like overblowing other parts. Um, so to go about this, to start off with what I usually do in my workflow is when I start with a photo, it's kind of flat like this. And for starters, I'll go up here to these sliders and usually I'll bring up the shadows a little bit just so we can kind of flatten the photo even more. So the shadows are getting flatter and you can see there's not as much dark shadows in there. So it's flat and I'll even bring the highlights down a little bit. Not so much in this one because it's not that bright of a photo to begin with. So already with that we have like a flatter image than we were starting with. Um, and then from there I'll jump down to these curves right here, this tone curve. And that's where a lot of like the heavy lifting of the photo editing comes about. So like usually when I first start I'll kind of try and set like the black or the dark points. So I'll go down here to the bottom left and I'll kind of bring this down to get like a dark, almost too dark for what I want. And then I'll go back up here to the top and I'll bring up the top. So now we're really like pulling the contrast out. And like now I'm watching the photo and looking at the tone curve while I'm doing this. And then from there, I already have kind of like a contrasty photo. And what I want to do is kind of pull up these like mid tones to highlights a little bit. So I'll go up here and I'll pull this up and kind of increase that contrast a little bit, which kind of starts to bring out like almost like the shininess in her hair, that light hitting it. We make it a little brighter. And then pull up maybe this like one little section right here that kind of tends to target like those highlights just alone. And even with just with that, you can look. That's before and that's just what we're at right now. Um, and it kind of just brings everything out and makes it pop. So from there, it's already kind of close. Like, and you can already see I'm not doing a whole ton with these photos. I'm not going crazy with creative stuff. Um, I kind of just like to bring out a little bit more of the contrast and make certain things pop and jump out of the photo. Um, a lot of people sometimes, especially on Instagram, you'll see they like to like kind of fade these blacks a little bit. So if you go down here to the tone curve and you grab this bottom left little dot on the blacks and you pull this up, it will really kind of like fade and you can see it on like the shadowy sections like on her hair right here. It'll start to fade, which is kind of a cool look. I didn't do it for this one when I edited it. Um, but it definitely gives it kind of like that more Instagram-y faded look. Um, and then a lot of times what I'll do after that is I'll go down here 
to these saturation controls, which are really cool. Um, and again, you can do a whole bunch of stuff here in the hue saturation luminance. Um, hue, for example, if you don't know, you can just go through each individual color if you really want to and like change how it looks. Like right now I'm changing the aqua or if I change the blue, I'm just changing the hue of the blue, which I usually don't do just because I don't like to. I like to kind of leave the colors. But what I do do a lot of is I like to desaturate. Um, and I think it took me a while to kind of figure out that like it's better, you're better off kind of desaturating certain colors to make the colors you want saturated popping out instead of saturating the colors you like more, if that makes sense. So um, like you can make the colors you like stand out more by desaturating the other colors. So like for example on this one I didn't do much, but like if you like I desaturate the blue a little bit and it's kind of like a muted tone almost that we tend to have um, in a lot of our pictures that I edit. And then once you mute that a little bit, you can even go up to the temperature up here and make it a little warmer just like the temp color temperature because like I know this photo was taken at sunrise which tends to kind of be a little um, cooler sometimes in the shadows so compare it to what it was before that's pretty close I think I might have cropped the other one a tiny bit um, but I think that's pretty cool um, jumping to another one here from the Golden Gate Bridge would be a very similar kind of idea with this one, I think I probably would have cropped it right here. And then you can see the finished product, I guess, would be like this is what I was kind of going for. And again, you can see it kind of like just bringing up that contrast and making certain things pop um, to stand out and really catch your eye. Like, so for starters, I'd probably bring up the shadows again. Uh, maybe bring down the highlights a tiny bit. And then jump straight into the tone curve where most of the the editing is happening where you kind of just like bring down the blacks what do I usually do pull out these highlights to where I want so like the idea is kind of pulling down the black point down here so like that's the darkest I want my photo to be and then point up this white point and be like okay that's where the whites are gonna be the bright and now go in between that and make certain things brighter or darker in between that if that makes sense so now it's going to the midpoints kind of like right where this first like hump of information is going and kind of bring that up Okay, so you can already see like right there like these mid-tones and like the grass kind of getting more contrast and more contrast in this like shadowy blue ocean right here. So we're creating contrast in those shadowy mid-tones. Creating contrast in those shadowy mid-tones and if you, if you even want more, maybe like grab a spot right here in the middle and pull down a little more just to make even more contrast. And in my opinion, I think the ocean is a little bit too bluey saturated for me. Um, so I might go down to the saturation and turn the blue down a tiny bit just to get like a muted tone. Um, and then maybe go up back up. So once we're done with that, we can maybe jump back into the sliders up here and like pull the highlights back up to give us more brightness. Um, these two are kind of like these first two were kind of, kind of straight up kind of basic pictures, um, that you can see we edited here. Um, jumping into some photos that maybe are a little more. Um, have some more stuff going on to begin with, like um, a little more contrast to jump in. You might have to do some more stuff at the beginning to kind of bring some stuff out. So here's out of the camera. This is from when we were at Horseshoe Bend back in Arizona. Um, and our friend Adam is standing on this cliff right here and you can see the canyon, it's pretty nice, but it's very bright because the contrast in this canyon is very insane. Like the the, the canyon walls themselves are very dark and then the sky is like, bright. So um, the sky ended up being a little blown out in this picture. Um, and then when you can see the finished product down here, we can look at it, um, kind of brought it all together so you can still kind of see the, the sky and the canyon, which is really cool. So to go about doing that, when we first start, we can look, uh, start off by bringing these highlights down, like see how far you can take it. And this is what's important, like when I was talking earlier, to make sure you shoot in raw. Because if you're shooting in raw, it has all this information that you can bring stuff down and the photo won't like deteriorate or lose the information or quality where if you're shooting just in JPEG, you probably won't be able to do that and it won't look that good. So we've got the highlights down right there to save the sky and we could probably bring the shadows up a little more just to kind of flatten this. Um, and then so we've got this kind of flat image to start with and then again, jump into the tone curve and just kind of set this black point of how dark do I want it? Like that's all right. And then go up here and be like, okay, how bright do I want it? How bright do I want my brightest part to be up here on the top? 
and then kind of go into the middle again. I usually, like, good rule of thumb for what I like to do usually is to go towards the edge of this, um, like, hill of information right here on the right and kind of grab this point right here because that's kind of like the top of these, like, shadowy, like, shadowy area, the brightest part of them. So you can kind of bring that up more and create this contrast in the shadows. Um, and I think one thing I was doing a lot with these Arizona pictures, if we look back at how I edited it before, was a little bit of like subtle desaturation in certain areas. So like, um, I think I even brought, you can see in the bottom left down here, there was kind of like a lens flare that makes it really orange. So if I bring down the orange, it kind of gets rid of that lens flare a little bit, makes it a little bit less like saturated. Um, then the canyon walls, a lot of times what you'll notice with canyon walls is they kind of start to turn purple, which is interesting. Um, so if like, if you desaturate the purple a little bit and like a little bit of magenta, it kind of gets rid of that purpley tone. If you go too far, it starts to look green and like terrible. Um, so don't overdo it. Um, but again, that's kind of like from there to like there again, we didn't do too much on this again. It's just the sliders and the tone curve again. So like, so like subtle things like little tools in this Lightroom thing can make a big difference on how your photo looks and you can go, I guess from just taking like a photo straight out of the camera, which is cool photo to begin with and kind of just doing a couple little things and like it just really can make the photo like pop, I guess if you want to put on Instagram and like make it look good. Um, last photo on here is this really awesome one of Courtney walking through and again in a pretty high contrast like scenario. So those first couple pictures I showed you of like the Golden Gate Bridge and even the one in Horseshoe Bend um, were a little flatter, weren't as crazy high contrast. Um, but photos like this, you kind of have to settle and be like, okay, I have to make sure like I'm capturing a certain amount of the shadows and the highlights so I can do something in post-production, right? So this looks pretty cool already. We've got like really bright sun coming through the trees. And then it's, there's definitely information in the shadows, not underexposed, but it could be a little brighter in my opinion if we wanted to make it brighter. So again, shooting raw, we have the ability to go in and do whatever we want with it. So, um, to kind of look at the finished product, this is the straight out of the camera, and then this is what we're going to end up with right here. You can see I brought the shadows up a little bit, maybe even brought the highlights up a little bit so there's more information so you can see everything. So let's go into this one again. We're going to start with these highlights, maybe leave the highlights a little bit, pull them down a tiny bit, bring the shadows up a good amount just so you kind of make it flat. Now we've got that information and the shadows right there, and now we'll go into our tone curve, set the darkest we want our black to be and then bring up the highlights again. And then now let's bring up right here along, kind of along this hump again is kind of my rule of thumb. I just kind of go for that. It usually works pretty well. Um, and then maybe bring down the blacks a little more. Maybe try even like fading the blacks by bringing up this bottom part. Um, make it a little brighter. Let's compare it to where it was at before. Pretty close. I think the only thing I might have done more on this, maybe just desaturate the greens a little bit. It tends to look, in my opinion, a little more cinematic with the, the desaturated greens. I, I always think that like really kind of bright, this one's not that bad even, but like this bright, like yellowy green kind of looks really like digital and doesn't look that filmy or cinematic, uh, which is kind of like the style I like to go for. Um, so if you can compare it right there, it's pretty close. I almost like the one I just did right now better. Um, and again, the idea here is we're not doing that much. All we're doing is these, these curves and I mean, sorry, all we're doing is these sliders and this tone curve to just kind of get it to work the way that you want it to. Right? So if you see that you want certain parts to be brighter, bring that part up on the tone curve. Okay. So if you don't understand how the tone curve works, there's plenty of tutorials on curves and things like that online. Um, check them out. But I hope this was some what helpful in the way that we kind of go about editing things. Um, Again, trying to keep it kind of simple and it's good to start off, like if you take good pictures to begin with, it really helps, especially with lighting. Um, it makes it a lot easier to edit photos if the lighting and everything is good. Um, hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, if you've maybe never edited a photo before, you like the way we edit our photos. Um, as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. Let us know in the comments section um, what you thought about this video, other things you'd like me to talk about. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching.